Let's find the derivatives of these three composite sine squared functions. Each one is sine squared with some function inside of it. Here's the derivative of plain old sine squared of x. We are using the chain rule here. The outside function is a thing squared, and the derivative of a thing squared is two times that thing, two times sine. But then, because sine is a function, by the chain rule, we also have to multiply by its derivative, which is cosine. Sine. Now, 2 sine x cosine x, that's the derivative, but it's helpful to notice that's the same as sine of 2x. That's a double angle identity that's useful to know. So we can simplify this derivative to just sine of 2x. Now, our situations are a little bit different because our inputs are not just x, they are functions like 2x and x squared. And here's how you take a derivative like that. The derivative of sine squared of a function u is 2 sine u cosine u, just like before, but then because u is also a function, we need to multiply by the derivative of u with respect to x. Once again, we can replace 2 sine u cosine u with just sine of 2u, and so in each case, the derivative is just du dx times sine of 2u. So let's try it out. I'm going to do this first example as if I didn't already know the formulas for this situation. I would say, okay, the outside function is a thing squared. The derivative of a thing squared is just 2 times the thing, 2 times sine of 2x. But because that thing that was being squared is a function, by the chain rule, we also need to multiply by its derivative. The derivative of sine of 2x is cosine of 2x. Don't touch that inside function, which is now 2x. But then we have to multiply by the derivative of that inside function, which is 2. That's the derivative of 2x. Then I would say, hey, look, 2 sine of 2x times cosine of 2x. I can apply a double angle identity to that and say that 2 sine of 2x cosine of 2x is just sine of 2 times the input. 2 times the input, in this case, would be 4x. And then I still have that 2 outside. That's from the derivative of 2x, remember. That's our du dx, looking back at the formula. And then we could finally rewrite this as just 2 times sine of 4x. We generally just prefer to keep the coefficients in front of the trig functions. Now, I wouldn't actually recommend memorizing this formula. You should just know how to deal with the chain rule in general. But with practice, you can get pretty darn quick at this stuff, as if you had memorized a formula. Let's move on to the second example, the derivative of sine squared of x squared. So if I had some experience, I might just look at this and know that I'm going to have 2 times sine of x squared times cosine of x squared, which I just immediately know is a double angle identity. That's just going to be sine of 2 times the input, sine of 2x squared. But then by the chain rule, I would need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is 2x. And then I would rewrite this so that the trig function comes second. We just prefer to have other stuff before the trig function. So 2x sine of 2x squared. Note that if you didn't use the double angle identity here, and you wouldn't necessarily be expected to in every situation, if you didn't use the double angle identity, then the derivative of this would look like 2x times 2 sine of x squared cosine of x squared. All right, let's finish up with this last example. We'll actually do one bonus example that's a little more complicated after this one. This is the derivative of sine squared of the square root of x. Just to mix it up, let's not use the double angle identity in this example. So I would start by bringing that power of 2 down as a factor, right? We're just using the power rule because the outside function is a thing squared. And then we'd have to multiply by the derivative of this inside function, the thing that was being squared. The derivative of sine of root x is cosine of root x, but then we have to multiply by the derivative of this inside function. Root x is the same as x to the one half, so its derivative is one half x to the negative half. At this point, you could apply the double angle identity to two sine of root x cosine of root x, but let's just leave it out for this example. So what I would do is move the half out front which would actually cancel out with that factor of 2, so we don't have to write either of them. So I would just put the x to the negative half out front, and then what's left is sine of root x 
cosine of root x. So those are our three simple examples. You can use these formulas or better yet, just know how to deal with the chain rule in general. Let's finish with one more challenging example. We have a few more layers to deal with here. All right, to take the derivative of this, again, the outside function at first is that squaring. So we need to bring that square down as a factor and then we just have whatever was being squared. This is just the power rule being applied to the outermost function. All right, now we have to multiply by the derivative of this function that was being squared. The derivative of sine of a thing is cosine of that thing. So we'll have cosine of sine squared of x squared. But then by the chain rule, we need to multiply by the derivative of the thing that was inside the sine. That's sine squared of x squared in this case. The derivative of sine squared of x squared, well, for that, we have to bring the square down as a factor, so 2 sine of x squared. And then we have to multiply by the derivative of the thing that was being squared. Sine of x squared was being squared and its derivative is cosine of x squared, but then multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is 2x. So that's our derivative, which after a couple double angle identities reduces to this. All we did was move the 2x to the front, and then 2 sine of sine squared of x squared cosine of sine squared of x squared, that's the same as sine of 2 sine squared of x squared. And 2 sine of x squared cosine of x squared is the same as sine of 2x squared. So knowing your double angle identities helps make this look a whole lot nicer. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and I'll leave links in the description to some other videos doing trig derivatives with the chain rule, as well as a link to my Calculus One exercises playlist. So check that out if you need more practice. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Ta -da. Ta -da.